This is a big ass car. This, <laughs> this is a big car. These really were pieces of art. Yes. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week, I'm at National Parts Depot headquarters down in Ocala, Florida, and I'm absolutely adrift in a sea of cars that is the NPD collection. Rick Schmidt and his dad, Jim, have amassed an absolutely amazing array of cars spanning just about all eras, makes, and models. You got the Schmidt. <laughs> 1911 Schmidt. And I love coming down here because Rick always lets me pick out a couple cars that I think are particularly cool to get up close and personal with. So this time, I went with a couple fabulous four doors a 1960 Oldsmobile Super 88, and a 1960 Buick Electra 225. These are incredibly cool cars, and you don't see them every day. But today, you're gonna see them. Let's check them out. Great to see you again, Rick. Great to see you too, Dennis. <laughs> well, this is gonna be really cool. We're we're doing an inside job today. We're doing an inside, <laughs> an inside job. job. <laughs> we're, we're in the belly of the beast. Exactly. So we're in the shop, and the collection's just over there. A couple, right. couple hundred just or so cars. Just on, <laughs> so, you know, as I said, when I started this thing out, I, I really wanted to do a couple fabulous four doors. Uh, yeah. Now, we have, yeah. A, we have a token two-door 1960, the Bonnie back here, that yes. I did with your dad. Many back years ago. Many, many yeah. years ago. Piece of my classic car history. <laughs> my classic car classic. Well, put the two door aside. We got a couple really unique four doors. Four doors yes. were sort of the red headed stepchild of, of uh, automobiles. Car collecting. For a long, long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. All the popular cars that, you know, the, the muscle cars and all that, there were a lot of them. Yes. And there still are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and everybody's got them. You go to a show and, and they're wonderful. I love them. But there's a lot of them. And if you want to stand out, you get, you get something like this. Yeah. <laughs> the 60 Buick. Electra 225 with the wild, the crazy roof. They did two roofs in 60. They, they did a did standard. Two roofs. They did two hard tops. They did a, a Riviera hard top. Which was more which of was a, a slope. pillarless, but it had a more, actually a more traditional sloped uh, rear glass and rear roof line. And then they did this four door hard top that was uh, similar to uh, what, what people commonly referred to as the flat roof. Yeah, this whole car yes. is crazy. I mean, starting right at the beginning, this thing, uh, I mean, I don't know another car really that, that kicks up the fenders. Buick uh, designers called this the Delta Wing styling, and uh, and it's really, really radical. Yeah, stem to stern, and and just I mean, I mean the grill. That's all I believe cast, isn't it? I mean, that's, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's heavy. You've got that scowling uh, hood line, and it, yeah, it's just fantastic. But this windshield too. Mm -hmm. Again, bunch of complex curves. I love how it hooks around, hooks around here. You know, yes. she actually goes farther back into the roof and then comes back around. So you have a lot of visibility in this thing. Every, every square inch of this car is styled by a stylist. I'll you know, say. They're, they're, they just, there's just nothing utilitarian about this car. It's just space age and crazy. Well then, that speedometer, I'm not actually looking at the speedometer, right? That's a mirror. That is a mirror. It's a and reflection. There's a, and there's a dial to the right-hand side of that where you can adjust the reflection to uh, suit the, uh, the ride height, you know, the, how tall the driver is and the entire dash uh, is totally unorthodox, unlike anything that came before or after, as far as I'm concerned. My goodness, it's it's just a gorgeous thing. Well, and then all this this uh, trim down low. I mean that mm -hmm. uh, that is machined or cast or something. But boy, I mean yeah, all that fin trim on the bottom was exclusive to the uh, to the Electra 225. And man, it's you know radical up front, but you get back here and it's equally crazy. Yes. And again, this delta wing. You've got the you've got the finish of the delta wing styling. And these kind of thruster-esque mm -hmm. tail lights. I mean, the thing looks like a rocket. It, it should was, take off. Yes, this is right at the uh, the end of the rocket age styling movement and and that wrap around I've heard those things called like flat tops or flat tops vista roofs I've heard before. I always like just mm -hmm. how it was cantilevered. You know, it came out over Yes. over the window. I mean, it's it's, 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 it, it, as neat as it is to look from the outside when you're in it driving, it's, it's, even, it's cooler. even cooler on the inside <laughs> because there's just nowhere you can look that you can't see. It's just, it's like the roof is just suspended in yeah, midair. Yeah, it's floating above you kind of. Yes, it's protecting you, you from rain, but mm -hmm. otherwise you're out there. So I would imagine this baby came with a nail head engine? Yes, it's got the 401. They call it the 445 Wildcat. The 445 Wildcat. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at that baby. Oh, she, the hood really narrows down here in the front, though, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Then curves around. Wow. So that 
445 Wildcat. Yeah, there's a lot of fender to lean over when you're servicing <laughs> one of these. I'll say. So this was, you know, this was typical of Buick. I mean, it's a 401 nail head, but... 445 was the uh, torque rating exactly. for the engine, and that's how Buick would, uh, would identify it. They were very proud of their, their torque specs, yes. and they mm -hmm. were probably the torquiest engines out there. Yes, uh, they were. Back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. Wow. All your cars drive as, as good as they look. Can we... Can we drive this one and take this out? For oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, let's I would, go exercise. I would love it. to do some 60s four door cruising. Close this baby up. Let's go for a ride. Yowza. That was a big ass car. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. There's something about a Buick. They're very special cars. Yes, I agree, and especially this this era of Buick is holy cow. This this, this thing is this, this thing thing's is all Buick, man. It's all Buick, <laughs> and doesn't doesn't share a single line with any of its other uh, GM counterparts. There's just something very very exotic about this car, both inside and out. Just all of the ways that it was designed, they were really trying to be futuristic with well, it. Well, and there's so many details. Anywhere you look, inside or outside, there's a detail. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of boring space anywhere in no. the, uh, these cars. No. Kids dig these cars because they look so so extreme. What, was your, what did your daughter say? My, my nine-year-old Anna said that Daddy bought a Batmobile. <laughs> she wanted to get a ride to school in the Batmobile. In the Batmobile. Yes. <laughs> so the, the 225, the Electra 225, was the top of the line? Yes. It was above Roadmaster. Roadmaster was no more. But then Roadmaster came back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Went away and then came back. The Oldsmobile is 10 horsepower less, and I don't believe it makes as much torque, but with the transmission that it's in it, it feels the like Olds feels a whole lot quicker than this Buick. That? I didn't realize that they had a, a unique uh, uh, transmission in these. Mm -hmm. They were criticized because they had these uh, twin and tri, well this is a twin um, turbine automatic transmissions that were designed to feel like they're shiftless for, for, oh, really? for smooth driving. It doesn't give you the the feeling of snappy torque. I'm loving it though. I love Buicks, but that Olds is calling out to me, man. That thing's pretty wild looking too. What do you say we go get that baby? Let's get it. It's Let's totally different driving it. and different inside, but uh, but uh, just as enjoyable. <laughs> well, let's go enjoy an Olds. So Rick, the Buick is, is amazing. And that turbine drive transmission was yes. so strange. I mean, Twin it, turbine, you just don't feel it shift. No, it was like just, it was just continuous mm -hmm. speed. It was, but, but it was nice, very smooth, very Buick. But now this, the Super 88, the old Super 88, also 1960, also four-door hardtop, similar yes. but different. Similar but different. It's a slightly shorter wheelbase. Oh, really? We were a little bit over 126 inches with the with the top of the line electric 225. The Super 88 rode on a, on a 123 inch wheelbase. Okay, all right. They but share the same roof line though, and and uh, Oldsmobile called this the holiday hard top. Now the interesting thing to me, and, and it's, they did it on both these cars, and in fact you could even see it on the Bonnie. Mm -hmm. You were coming out of the Finn era, yes. but they hadn't given them up yet. So mm -hmm. what they did was they laid them down. Yes. You know, and and in in the. They went in, horizontal. In Buick, with yeah, it, yes. it still sweeps up a little bit, but mm -hmm. here they they just laid these fins flat. Mm -hmm. It's just a you know, and then and then molded the uh, uh, tail light into that. And I like and, and this it's a downturn, fascinating rear end on this it car. It is. And they actually painted the bottom half of the bumper. This entire. Well, you mean all this? This is all bumper too. That's all bumper. And uh, you know, knock on that. That's, You're kidding. Yeah, that's <laughs> not uh, that's not normal uh, 20 gauge sheet metal. No, it's not. And this blue was uh, something that you see a lot of Oldsmobiles mm -hmm. in. It was a, a popular Oldsmobile color. Here again, though, the interiors. You have three different colors on the side panels. You got you know two different, three different embossing patterns, three different uh, 
colors and fabrics uh, and the seats, you know, mm -hmm. metal tr metal thread in there. You've got, you, yeah, you've got the foil thread in the fabric. It's the, the whole entire interior is kind of a feast for the eyes. There's so much detail and so many different shades and colors going on. It's just, it's a gorgeous interior. I love driving this car just so I can stare at the dashboard. <laughs> well, and you know, that is one of the best steering wheels ever made. That yeah. Oldsmobile mm -hmm. that just, you know, falls away there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got that sort of three-dimensional, uh, they're over by the glove box. And by the way, about a, what, a two and a half foot long glove box there. Yes. You but it put falls your favorite away. Uh, stick in there. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball bat. Right. Uh, but Super 88, and then it falls away behind that to mm -hmm. that, you know. Like that, a shadow box type yeah. of deal. Yes. A little diorama there. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Now this baby is also, you know, beautiful restoration on a Buick, but this is an original car. This is an original car. This is a totally unrestored. It has a little bit less than 16,000 original miles on it. Um, all original paint, trim, upholstery. It's really an untouched survivor. That's amazing. And you can tell with the paint, because you can see the factory uh, orange, the orange peel. Orange peel, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have near the, the, the glimmer of the, uh, of the uh, Buick. One of the reasons we like to uh, collect the original cars is so, so people can see it's, it's exactly how, it how they were back in the yeah. day and how they were built. Well, you know, the other thing I like uh, that I think is a nice touch to this is the baby blue rims. Yes, the wheels are painted body color and that really sets off a nice accent. And I hadn't noticed these earlier, but these on the, either side, these the little Oldsmobile the rocket. Oldsmobile rockets. Mm -hmm. So this has got a rocket V8 in it of some description? Yes, it's description? a 394. Let's let's have a look. Three ninety four, huh? Yes. Okay, and we're not nearly as pretty looking under the hood of this, but then again, we haven't really done anything except for put a modern battery in it. An unrestored nineteen sixty engine compartment. Yes. With only fifteen or sixteen thousand. Just uh, just a little bit less than sixteen thousand original miles. Just amazing. You can still see the uh, factory grease pencil markings on the yes. firewall and all the little details that make it interesting. So this baby's only got. 15,000 miles and change on it, but mm -hmm. she runs like a like a new car. Can we take it out and put just a few more miles oh, on yeah. it? Oh yeah, it does run and drive just like a new car and to keep it that way, we better drive it. I way. think we should. Close it up, let's, right. let's take this rocket for a, a blast. Boy, this is smooth. This is a real cruiser. It's got more pickup, it seems. It's, it's got more torque to it. That's the Oldsmobile transmission and, uh, you know, that, uh, that twin turbine Buick transmission. It, it's smooth and you never feel a shift, but it doesn't have the responsiveness. No, but I, you're right. I did not feel that thing shift. It was mm -hmm. like, it was just, you were just going all the time. But this feels like it's a little bit musclier. This thing is like blue on blue on blue on blue. There's a lot of blue in this yeah. car. I'm not a big baby blue fan, but it really seems to work on this yeah, car. Yeah, it does. Since this is an unrestored car, as opposed to the Buick being restored, the, just the, the quality and condition of the interior is exceptional on the thing. Yeah, and boy, they used so many fabrics in those interiors back in the day. I mean, there was just different mm -hmm. patterns and colors and and in grains a, and... Yeah, in a single car. You know, it's got a similar steering wheel to the Buick. Yes. It, you know, that same line of sight, and it's got the ribbon speedometer, which mm -hmm. is green right now. At low speeds. But it, and it changes color. Yes. It goes from green to orange to red, I believe. Wow. Is the sequence. Red being that you're getting in trouble. <laughs> What an interesting headliner. These are foam, and oh, it's man. rare, you know, you have to be gentle with it. Uh, it's rare to see these foam headliners intact in the old, uh, early 60s old Oldsmobile. They probably just dried up and crumbled? They rot, dry up, crumble, and they kind of uh, they reg get... regress to the elements <laughs> that they came from, you know? Everything you got dandruff when you get out of the car. It's actually your headliner that's like <laughs> flaked, flaked down on you. Yeah. No, that's a beautiful shape. And I, and I just love those back windows, man. It's like, you see everything. Yeah. <laughs> you just see everything. This car doesn't have the optional mirrors, but who needs mirrors right. when all you have to do is <laughs> twist your neck around and you see everywhere. Yeah, it is amazing. I've always thought, you know, in the 60, the 60 olds, that turned down bumper in back, 
Mm. It's kind of an interesting look. I don't know another car that really yeah. did that. You know, the colors and the whole look of the car just kind of screams family vacation. Yeah. <laughs> it's got plenty of room. You know, this is this for the whole family. Mm -hmm. So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring. <laughs>